Hey, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji Guys. Fuji Guys are going to give you the first look today at our brand new X20. Of course, this is the new version of the X10, my personal favorite camera I've been using for about the last year. I love this camera and I love the improvements we've done on it. A uh, couple of things. We are going to be offering this camera in a black or in a black and chrome version so like this really one. So looking. a little bit more retro looking so you, that you'll have the option. A uh, couple of big enhancements we've made uh, as well as some less significant ones. But the biggest ones in my mind are we've now used the X-Trans CMOS sensor technology. That's the same sensor technology we have in the X-Pro1 and the X-E1. So allowing us to remove the anti-alias filter and give you much sharper pictures. So that's right. one. Second thing is the X10. We all love that it had an optical viewfinder, a nice glass optical viewfinder, right. but it was lacking information. Now there's information overlays, electronic uh, information overlays within the optical viewfinder. So it kind of makes it not quite like the hybrid viewfinder of the X100, but a little bit closer to it and a lot more practical for when you're using it. So obviously it's going to be a camera that's going to be loved by people that love photography but just want a smaller, reliable, high quality, high image quality camera to take with them. Billy, give us a first look, take us around the top, the bottom, the front and tell us what all the controls are for, please. Absolutely, Greg. I mean, the camera basically is very similar to the X10, so if you actually look at the X10 first look video, mm -hmm. it basically is going to be the same thing, but of course uh, there are some slight differences. Uh, looking at the front of this cam, of course, we have the, again, the manual zooming Fujinon lens is an f2 to 2.8 lens, so it's quite fast. Uh, it goes from a 28 to 112, and again, turning on the lens is basically rotating the front of this camera, as you can see right there, and it gives you sort of that infinite control when it comes to zooming, and it's, it's nice, uh, definitely a nice feel uh, to that, you know, similar to uh, the way DSLRs are, so that's how you go on and off with that as well. Uh, beside the lens, of course, you got the AF assist lamp, and uh, above from that, you also got the left and right stereo microphone so that you can start recording HD uh, video with stereo sound. Uh, this year, the HD video offers 60 frames per second shooting, and that means it's great for when you want to edit the video and slow it down in slow motion so you have less blur in doing so. And of course, it's a little bit more lifelike now when you're recording sports and whatnot that you, you have it shoot at 60 frames a second. Beside that, you got your optical viewfinder window. Uh, there's some slight design changes to it to improve things like dust from uh, you know getting into to the uh, and sticking on. So they've they've kind of uh, re re uh, repurposed that a little bit better and and uh, designed it uh, uh, so that obviously fingerprints and stuff are less likely to get on to that that, that front. Um, beside and below it, you have of course the uh, the focus selectors. You got manual focusing, autofocus uh, with a single shot, and of course uh, continuous autofocus. Uh, as an option right there. If you select manual focus, then you'll use the command dials on the back of this camera to adjust the focusing, okay? Now looking at the side of the camera, you got the area where you can attach your neck strap, and that's really it for that side. On the opposite side of this camera, you have, of course, the, again, the other end of the neck strap attachment, and you got a little door here that gives you access to the HDMI port as well as the USB port. In addition to that, that USB port also doubles up as a microphone input. So we do and are offering sort of an external microphone accessory for uh, these cameras. It, it comes with an external microphone, which is a 2.5 millimeter plug. And it will come with an adapter, a USB to 2.5 adapter that you can now connect to the X20. So you can use, obviously, better audio uh, with this camera. Saying that, of course, you also have that control in the uh, menu system as well to adjust the mic levels. And uh, it's going to be a great camera, definitely now for, for full HD shooting and then for HD video, OK? Um, on the bottom of this camera, you got your tripod mount. Uh, it's uh, it, you know, the standard tripod mount. It's a metal tripod mount and uh, will fit basically any tripod out in the marketplace. You got the speakers and you got your battery door. The battery door opens up by sliding that little switch and it pops open to give you access to the uh, battery, which, you, which it uses the same NP50 batteries like the X10. And of course, you also have your memory card slot as well. It accepts SD. SDHC as well as SDXC cards, and if you are planning to do a lot of you know HD video and maybe shooting with RAW and JPEG with this camera, I definitely want to shoot it with a very fast card. It can even accept the ultra high speed cards out in the marketplace. Looking at the top of this camera, you got your exposure compensation dial that allows you to adjust you know over and over and under compensate the scene by uh, up to uh, two stops. 
You got your function button, which gives you access to things like the ISO control, dynamic range, film simulation modes. Whatever you want to configure it to, you can hold the function button down for a few seconds, and it'll bring up the customized uh, screen on the back of the LCD so that you can set it to what you want. I generally like to have it for the ISO control, so I can quickly adjust that. You got your shutter release button, pushing halfway down. Pre-focuses all the way down. Takes a photo. You got uh, a thread that's built onto that shutter release as well, so you can attach it, you know, a standard uh, cable uh, release and, um, you know, use it the old school way uh, with this camera. You got the, of course, mode dial now. The mode dial gives you access to, you know, the different scene shooting modes, including a full manual control. So you do have true aperture blades on this camera, so you can access, you know, the aperture and shutter speed controls. In addition to that, you got your video mode, you got panoramic modes through the advanced mode settings, different scenes, as well as this new SR Auto Plus mode that really determines a huge amount of scenes uh, that you'll be shooting in. It kind of does everything for you, uh, sort of like a fully, fully automatic uh, uh, mode if you wanted to go that route. Beside that, you got your external flash uh, hot shoe so that you can connect any Fuji TTL uh, flash with it, and it supports, obviously, TTL. If you want to use your own flash, you could, but, it, but you have to manually set that, of course. Uh, the camera does, also has a built-in flash right there. It's on the top, and actually the switch is on the back, which pops open the flash, as you can see. So that's just a quick, a quick look at the top of this camera. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the back of this camera. Um, on the back, you've got, of course, the, the LCD screen. It's, again, um, a nice size. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got direct controls to a few things. You've got the playback button. You got your auto exposure controls where you can select things like spot metering, uh, average metering, or matrix metering, if, if you want to say that. You got an access button now to the um, you know, continuous shooting modes and also bracketing modes. If you wanted to uh, shoot in film simulation bracketing or you want to shoot in the high speed shooting modes, you can just push that button and it brings up the screen to select. You have your white balance control selections as well, and it also offers, uh, of course, you know, the Kelvin scale as well as custom white balance options. And in playback, these two buttons, the AE button, the continuous button, becomes the sort of you know, uh, zoom in, zoom out type of mechanism. Looking at the top, uh, again, is the, the flash pop-up button. So that's how you turn on the flash. And then from there, you would obviously use a directional pad to adjust the different flash modes. Uh, beside that, you got the optical viewfinder, as Greg mentioned. The, the newest feature, of course, in this camera is the ability to display information now. So you have, you do have the shooting information, you do have grid lines, you even have some focus confirmations uh, available on that optical viewfinder, which is actually quite incredible. And because of the information display on this now, you 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 do have a viewfinder, an eye sensor built in, so that uh, when you're using the optical viewfinder, it will switch between the LCD screen and, of course, the, uh, the optical viewfinder. Beside that, you've got a low LED light, and it just sort of blinks, and it's really your, ax your, your, your display to tell you when it's writing to the, to the memory card, of course. Um, you've got the command dial, the sub-command dial right here, which allows you to adjust the aperture or shutter speed controls. Again, I will have some top features video on this camera, which will go through some of the controls on how to operate mm -hmm. things like the aperture and the shutter speeds. Just below that, you have your AELAFL button, your auto exposure, auto focus lock button that you can configure to either lock both exposure and focus or just lock uh, one or the other. Uh, you got your command dial, which allows you again to again adjust shutter speeds and or aperture and or navigate through images in playback mode. In addition to that, this whole thing is also a directional pad that allows you to navigate the menu systems going up, down, left, right. Uh, you also, in, in, in the shooting modes, of course, uh, when you push the button to the left, you have the flash controls, you have the self timer, the macro mode. And what we changed this year is move the AF point focus because it offers 49 different focus points. We now made it easier and we put it on the directional pad so you can push up and then change the 49 different points. So it's easier when your eyes are up on the, on the viewfinder. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got the menu OK button to give you the OK button for saying yes to you know anything in the menu, whether it's deleting. And you got your display back button to either go out of that and and uh, when you're in the menu systems. But for the screen, you can also put, use the display back button to toggle between the different uh, LCD displays from grid lines to even a horizon, histograms, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it's fully customizable, which mm -hmm. is great. 
Uh, what's new on this camera, of course, and it's taken from the X Pro One XE One, is the uh, Q button. With the latest update on the X Ten, you also were was able to have a Q button. Now we place mm -hmm. the, the the dedicated raw button, and that gives you access to some of the photographic control. So that's just a quick look around the brand new X Twenty. Uh, a great upgrade update, I think, definitely with the new sensor technology, with the video controls, uh, with the mic input. Like I said, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a definitely win a good winner in terms I'm, of. The, I'm uh, looking through forward to the new camera. viewfinder. I love using optical viewfinders, but right. uh, I also like, uh, I'm you know, looking forward to getting that information as well to keep it very handy, to keep your eye on there. So do look out for the uh, top features video because there's a lot of stuff to tell you about this camera here. In fact, check out all our vi other videos uh, by subscribing to our YouTube channel or follow Billy on Twitter if you want to get all the news from Fuji as it happens. Till next video, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. Thank you.